The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Pleasant. Good evening, everyone out there. It is Thursday, August 10th, 2023. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn. Played back in the Perlis of Saban era as a team captain and a center. And I couldn't do this up with my dogs here that played for the, you know, D'Antonio and John L. Smith there. We got the boss, Otis Wiley, the hard-hitting ball, hawking safety, and J.U. Choo Choo Culkert. Just a touchdown machine. 21 tutties in one season. Pretty damn good. 21, 21, 21. 21, 21. <laughs> and number 21, by the way. If this is your first time joining the show, we welcome you. If this is not your first time, we thank you. Be sure to go in the live chat. That's where the party's at. And let us know where you are watching from. You need to know. You know? And be sure to follow us on all of our social media handles at This is Sparta MSU. Click the like and subscribe buttons. Helps us a whole lot. Doesn't cost you a thing. Fellas, It, I can smell the season. It's here. It's upon us. Football season is here. We got preseason football happening right now. Camp is rolling, guys. And we have a special announcement. As we continue to grow This Is Part of MSU, we are excited to announce SeatGeek as the newest sponsor of our show, SeatGeek, is the official ticket marketplace of Michigan State Athletics. SeatGeek will be rewarding a lucky fan with upgraded seats for each home game. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, so Spartan fans can fan. And we be fanning, boy. <laughs> Look, it's true. We be fanning, no concern. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, man. sir. Absolutely, baby. Let's Welcome go. Welcome to man. the party, Seat Geek. And we Seat ain't done Geek. yet, but we love them. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Spark fans and followers, if you are looking for some tickets, obviously go to the ticket office and get your season tickets. But it's really important that you resell on this marketplace because it is a great partnership. Um, but just know that uh, we'll have a big rollout for next week. But we wanted to make sure that uh, we show the love and uh, we'll be good getting getting it going. So when you're in when you're in the seats, hopefully you're that lucky fan and you'll get to go down to the beautiful lush touchdown club. So just keep that up and and going. So we're excited. We're excited. Get to hang with Choo Choo too. Ooh, are we? I'm gonna still see Smith. Are we geeked? <laughs> geeked up, geeked up. <laughs> yes, sir. It's a celebration, guys. Look, there's a lot to talk about today. We have, you know, we Otis. We we know your excuse from the last show because you were handling real business. But like we talked about the expansion of the Big Ten by acquiring now. Oregon and Washington to the big, we just want to know, like, what are your thoughts on the new expansion of the college football as it's going right now, especially the big 10 specifically? Ah, uh, man, I, I, I've seen, I got, I got, I got mixed feelings because clearly we all know it's about that, that money. It's all about the money. It's all about the media network, but you also understand that it's a lot of opportunities for the current student athletes, but future student athletes that come in to these respective schools um, but I don't know, man. It's it's a, this is a large territory, you know. You know, we be saying, "God enlarge my territory." <laughs> this is a large territory, right? Like, and so it's one of those things that um, you know we we all had our concerns when we brought in Rutgers in Maryland, but then all of a sudden, like you know, you get over it, right? You get over it, and you got that New York market, that Northeast region market. Um, we all know, just Michigan State specifically that our alumni database and fan base reaches in every in every state and across the nation uh, and globally. And so for, for us, I mean, it's great for Spartan fans that can't get to East Lansing to watch a game and that's any sport. 
you know, we're going to be able to see and, and show some love and support to the Michigan State Spartans teams that participate on the West Coast. Um, it's weird because you also see, you know, one of our legend ADs who was a trailblazer and Gene Smith, you know, announcing his planned retirement next year. And you kind of mm-hmm. you kind of scratch your head and say, hey, um, are people getting are people getting out because this is getting this is getting crazy. Right. Like it was like. How are you going to manage this? Yeah, or not not that. I mean, clearly he's a, he's the OG, triple OG and um in this game and athletics, but you just kind of scratch your head like just the budget of managing budgets is gonna be just outrageous. Um, and so we'll see how it goes. But I think it's good from just a brand standpoint that you know we have one of the most we're the most powerful conference. I saw a little another note was like, look, the SEC is just a regional conference. <laughs> you know, like it's just uh, notifying that we all have the, the most revenue out of you know, out of each conference. Um, but yeah, it's crazy because we're playing Washington. You know, we have our home and home uh, series, so we get us we get a taste of what it can be. And who knows, man, that Washington Michigan State can can spark a rivalry. But we'll see. We will see. Yeah. Oh. Great question there by Cal. He says, you ever think it may be time, a, ch- a time change issue for players moving forward? So being able to adjust, because now we, we're going to have a conference that spans three time zones. Players play, man, no matter what time zone. But I know that when we get over there, when we, my senior year, we went over to play Cal. I remember Coach D kept us on Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> and so we fly out there two days early and, you know, we played midday. Uh, I don't think there was really any issue. I think it was just a difference of elevation and heat from a standpoint. But, yeah, you say you don't think it's an issue, too? I don't there think is, There is issue. That time zone definitely plays a factor. I mean, um, if you go out there and get adapted to it like it, we did, like, yeah. I just – you still – I we still should have won that game. I don't care about no time zone, right? Like, you know, yeah, it I is an it. issue. I get but. it. At the end of the day, you're going you're gonna to play – But the time zone does take a toll. And we spoke about this on Tuesday, uh, Stray and I, and uh, it's the same thing. It's not as bad going from the East Coast to the West Coast. It's worse coming from the West Coast to the East Coast to play. And that, again, is why I said, you know, know, these teams are going to probably come on a Thursday for a Saturday game so they can get try to get the acclimation period down and uh you know like coach D did you know get your body adjusted you know to all those different things so it is going to play a factor in it I'm not so concerned with the night games um the only concern with the night games that you know it's from a fan perspective because a night game in you know in Cal could be, you know, oh. 11 o'clock here on the East Coast, you know, so that's the thing for the fans. But from the playing aspect of it, those guys, and I don't think the Big Ten or the TV, but it's the TV, it's money that who knows, Washington comes to East Lansing and play a noon game, and that's 9 a.m out on the west coast so that's you know those are the things i'm you know that i think it will take some adjusting to do but like we talked about it with the way that the nc with the way that college football especially in these teams with the nutrition program the strength and conditioning program the psychologies uh the psychologists you know all those different things are going to get these players ready to go. And also, too, Otis, I'm, I would love to get your take on this because, uh, you know, Stray and I went extensively into it. When it comes to Olympic sports, when it comes to um, volleyball, and you have to go out there on the Tuesday night, you go from Rutgers to Washington on a Tuesday night, you know, how you know how is school going to be done? Work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how do all those things come into play as well? Yeah, look, I think I think COVID was the test of time of like you can do your your work remotely. <laughs> like, let's be real and honest, right? Because remember, like when we used to do the travel, you had to go to our professor. Here's your here or your your dean, whoever the case may be. Here's the list. Here's the travel dates. Can you sign this off? And I think now as you like universities. You Oh my God! Oh, this guy, see, bro. go to yeah, I this one. Uh, this one, uh, look. Yeah, this about his deal. I'm gonna have a three seven. <laughs> okay, I want number thirty. <laughs> I no, swear, no, no, no. Man. for football. I think no for football. Yeah, different. we no. didn't have no. we. We, well, look, we. You said we. You said our we. Our classes were scheduled. We didn't. We had a, like a morning class oh, or so you. on a Friday before you flew out. But I didn't have a night class on a Friday that I was in jeopardy of missing. 
No, nah, it's you because then we would leave. If, like, for instance, at Cali, we were leaving Thursday morning. Right. Like, One day morning. that you had. Yeah. But, like, yeah. you still, like, other stuff, like, you know, travel wise, you know, I had like Friday classes in that morning piece of it, but we were locked down. So, like, you had to go in there. It's like, hey, these are the games that we're I leaving. I'm still going to class on a Friday morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Here we go. <laughs> Anywho, now look, now you're going to class. Okay. But, no, but you talk about you talk about like the, the COVID, you know, said it. Yeah, but that was for everybody. The yeah. virtual classes. But, this isn't for everybody now. You know, yeah, there will I'm, be but I'm saying, attendance there. Yeah, but I'm saying like it's manageable, right? Like it's one of those things that now it's manageable, but it's going to be another layer of a responsibility factor that you know you gotta truly monitor, you know, our academic support. This is just speaking on Michigan State specifically, but every institution has, you know, the academic support behind them to get them to that level of, you know, obviously staying on track to graduate and keeping up on your studies. But, you know, I remember I remember being at SMU and I remember I remember going with the women's basketball team to Colorado. This was over Thanksgiving break. And I remember, um, you know, they had the academic support and they had study study hours right during that week. So they had to go in and log it, log in for two hours or if it was an hour, everybody break out their books, do what you got to do. And it's basically start in hour. Then you're able to clock that. So I'm not sure how it will be, but I know for a fact. Were you here be... when we were you here when we played at Hawaii? No, I was my senior year. That was my senior year in high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, we went to Hawaii for a week and uh, we, we did the, the tutors and, you know, they yeah. did come, we did similar to what you just said. We had, you know, our study, study, table, study, there, hours. Our yep. study table and everything and the, our practice. And then obviously we had time to run around town. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm shocked that that happened. You know, we went yeah. to Hawaii. It was the, uh, the Aloha Bowl. We didn't have any class that time. And we played Washington. I remember that. They played against Washington in a bowl game and, played Oregon the next season, I think in the second game of the season. So yeah, there, there's a, uh, you know, there, there's not going to be one, as you said a second ago, Jay, it won't be one game anymore on the West coast. It, it could be multiple. Oh, it's depending. going to be, it's going yeah. to be, you know, it's yeah. just like how baseball plays those triple headers. Like baseball's baseball is going to be out there like a week long. You're going to hit USC and you're going to turn right back around, not come back, but play UCLA. Get that out the way, and depending how the scheduling, because now you know, like current teams in the Big Ten, we've been five years, seven years out from a scheduling standpoint. So now that they're coming in for 2024, it's like, how do we plug this in? And then you see, hey, we might go to a 10 game conference play game, like conference. Uh, well, go ahead. The, my thing too is, is um, what about those sports that not all the schools have? Yeah, like East the West Coast got beach volleyball. Right, you, know, right. you know what I'm saying? Like they got, yeah, they do. Ain't nobody beach volleyball up here, son. <laughs> allegedly, like, yeah, allegedly. Does, hockey, does you know does USC know. does Cal do they have hockey? You know, oh. like you know what, what what happens in those cases? There are you you like, know they got saying, water they got water polo at USC UCLA. You know what I mean? Like what what are we gonna do? Like are we, we going to Big Ten championship is gonna be between like three teams, four teams? I mean, that's how if you look at lacrosse right now, like, look at lacrosse league, how they got to set up. We got Ivy League schools with Ohio State. Like, just look at how that's gone, gone uh, from a standpoint. So it's really like everybody, everybody's going to build their own type of little conference put by sport. Like, I don't even know USC and UCLA have great wrestling, but I'm sure they do. But like gymnastics, like we're at a level where we're going to be playing US, UCLA, which is a great powerhouse in, in gymnastics. So. It's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, everybody's just got to adjust, clearly, because it's happening. So, right. ain't, no, like, ain't nobody saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm out of here. Like, you just got to adjust, and, you know, you got to get with the times, or you're going to get lost in the sauce. This is simple as that. Overall, I love, I love it for the conference overall. I love it for the conference. It's going to bring the spotlight on the Big Ten. You know, the bullies on the block are back. You know, we're going to compete with, you know, SEC schools. Now you're going to see – you know, SEC schools try to up their game and try to find more people to come because, you know, you're going to have that year, that reign of where it's the Big Ten winning these national titles because, um, you know, every team is going to be better. It's going to be better for recruiting. The recruiting is going to be, you know, you think it's here right now. It's going to go up to here. You know, that 
2025 when everyone's settled in, that recruiting period's going to be crazy. And uh, so if you want your favorite player to come to your school, you better get that checkbook and be standing there too. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> yeah, but look, look, it, Sean asked a question, uh, you know, will this is Sparta MSU do a show from the Coliseum? The answer is absolutely. The Coliseum at USC, <laughs> without question. <laughs> That's done. I already know what I'm <laughs> thinking right now. <laughs> oh, this first word. <laughs> <Wait for it. laughs> right. Uh, but uh, in Art Duravage, you, you asked, do, putting our former player hat on, are we excited about the four new West Coast teams? I mean, yeah. I mean, you think about it, we've played, we've played those teams. Like, you know, I I don't remember recall us playing UCLA or U, USC in a long time, but yeah. we played Oregon, we've played Washington. Like, we've got the taste of the Pac-12, and then you know, it's an opportunity that, like you said, the brand, the brand, the brand, the brand, the reach, the universities. Uh, you know, we had a joke about you know our 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 president of Playfly, you know, Stanford alum. So he's like, Stanford got lost. You know, they got left out. Right. Like, you know, they were hoping like yeah, you bring someone in that's at the upscale that university. But, you know, it's just it is what it is. Now, you're really going to see how this this, this pack 12 uh, dissolves or tries to uh, attain and getting some other people in. Uh, I saw a lot of schools that try to get in and, you know, got denied. You know, SMU, I saw try to get into some. It's just like, dang, man, like you can't even get into like they let go teams. You can't even get in like. It's, it's all over. Like now people are trying to figure out how to get into this media money network. Now it's really like we're at the beck and call of the networks now, right? The, the media. So if something was to happen, like lo and behold, if things fold, like how does that go? You know, I think it's looking at that. How will it, how will it unfold if the network crumbles? Like ESPN starts to lay off people. Does that reflect <laughs> Starts. Does that reflect starts still, you know, <laughs> reflects, does that trickle down effect to the media? But, you know, it was good, man, to, to see, you know, I had a good meeting with NBC and Peacock today. It's like, I mean, it's about to, it's, it's there, man. Like the activations are there. It's about to be crazy on campus with them supporting, you know, the big 10, big 10. So it's going to be good. The, but, the, the thing to, to arts uh, question there, um, what I'm interested to see is who, what, with these, you know, four uh, Pac-12 teams coming right, and then into the Big Ten, and who is going to absolve who is the question there. And I'm, when I say that, I mean in game play. Is the Big Ten guys, the traditional teams, so Ohio State, the Penn State, the Michigan, are they going to try to recruit for a finesse, or is the Pac-12 going to recruit for those – Heavy hitter, power, meet, meet, yeah. power, ground and pound, you know, for cold weather games. So that's going to be some things to keep an eye on as well is that that shift in recruiting. How does that happen now? What types of players will these schools be going after? Like you're going to see, you're gonna see USC, UCLA, that Tundra game in the snow <laughs> be out here like, nah, nah. Not on. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the thing about it too is it's all he he ha ha in it's those true. cold games when I it's know. snowing at the beginning you're like yeah 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 third yeah. quarter come around you yeah. sit there you looking like damn it's right. cold out here I can't feel my fingers <laughs> or your and feet don't, and don't right. be losing in cold games because it seems like the temperature drops an extra ten degrees mm -hmm. <laughs> that hits it hurt a little more <laughs> I agree everything man. hurts more. You don't feel it until you get to those showers, man. You know, you brought up an interesting point there, Otis. You brought up like SMU trying to get in to, the, I think it was a Big 12. Yeah. There's rumors of donors ponying up $200 million to try to buy their way into different conferences and places like that. You see Florida State is now looking at moving out of the ACC, and they're looking at going to private equity, which brings me to there's a lot of talk about the Public investment fund. You guys know what that is? That's that Saudi money, man. That that live golf. The same group that had offered, I think, uh, two players nearly a billion dollars. I think it was over a billion dollars for Tiger Woods. Yeah, and Tiger Woods. Remember what Tiger Woods' response was like? No, like I won't. He, I, which is crazy to me because clearly that's a lot of money. And Tiger's made a lot of money, but uh, <laughs> good lord, like. Eight hundred million plus for yeah, Tiger. Yeah, but those with those 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 big boy contracts come big boy 
obligations. So, of course, you got to keep yeah. your head on a swivel. The, the, the thing about it. that was that they didn't want to move and, and like turn their back on the PGA because PGA and Liv were fighting only to find out that now they they're joined, together. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. That that's PGA the was stealing all those people money. <laughs> PGA was. Yes, they, they weren't were. paying their You're players, right. and they, they got they got out. You know, that's that's yeah. one of the reasons they weren't paying their players. And there's money in there to be paid, but they're taking all that money and bringing it in there. But that's a uh, different discussion. Yeah, I mean, look, let's look at the media deals per conference right here. If we could bring those up, yeah, fellas, uh, you know, ranking the Power Five NAA, well, NCAA football TV contracts here. All right, Big Ten's number one. You got seven billion. With NBC, Fox, and CBS, that's a seven-year deal. Wow. Mm. And so UCLA and um, USC get their eighty. That was originally agreed upon, and then Oregon, Washington gets their sixty mil. Um, but Oregon, Oregon coming in, <laughs> Oregon don't even like they got Phil Knight. You know what I mean? Like they don't. Yeah, they good. don't say they, they're they're good, but I mean it's this is crazy, man. It's crazy. But, at, at what point, with all this all this money that's being tossed around here, these universities getting these eighty million, these sixty million, and everything like that, at what point do they, you know, does everybody get a little bit of it now? And when I say everybody, I mean players. At what point do they get some of this? You know, other than nil deals. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because there's that's a question. Like, like, Art yeah. says that right here. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, oh, the, did you did you see Art's question before? I did not see Art's oh, question. Oh, oh, that thing was going up. Oh, y'all just on the same right here. <laughs> okay, choo choo do revise. All right. Uh, look, so, <laughs> look, that's a that's a that's a phenomenal point. Like, when are they going to start doing that? That's the way out of this. I think when they were talking about regulating the NIL and everything that they're trying to do in Washington to get their arms around this, I don't think collectives are going away. But I think the base of it all will have to come from the, the revenue generated for the media deals. I mean, we thought we had all, all the different um, deals up. I know Big Ten's number one. SEC is the second ranked school. I think they have about our conference at about three billion. Then there's Big 12, ACC, and the Pac-12 is now pretty much defunct. But, you know, when you look at that, guys, like, it, look, it could go. It, it would be it would make the most sense just to get a percentage of those. TV media rights deals and give them to the scholarship players on uh, every everybody, team. not just scholarship, everybody, everybody every, eats. whoever. Yes. The team, yeah. the team, the team. So, but the problem is if you, if it's equal, then the teams will have caps on how many players, because you don't want to, you know, one team's got 130, the other one's got 90. So the guys have more money. You cap your team around. at 110. You cap there you go. At 110. There's got to be caps guard. Yeah. Right. And then, Man. and then players don't get too excited now because then there's fines. <laughs> Wait for practice, you're getting fined. That Overweight, a, it's a fine all, all business now. Mm -hmm. Well, That's little cool. like I know we gotta go to our next topic, but people forget that the university presidents are the ones driving this. Where right? like it's it it we think the academic prowess and integrity is, of the institutions are out the window, but truly. The presidents are looking at the institutions from the integrity and the respect factor, UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington. And it's like, you know what? That uplifts the academic institution level of the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. So that's the driving force there. And then and then athletics, you know, but then athletics supersedes it because you're looking at how these student athletes got to go out there and be the brand ambassadors for your universities and competing. So um, it's, it's interesting that we – kind of have failed to forget about the academic piece of it. Um, but it it's all encompassing with academics, athletics, athletics, academics. So I know we got our next topic, but this is a, this is a good one. This is going to be ever changing because there's going to be a lot of more rollouts and details that we will always bring the hottest news to you all and, and discuss this. Um, but we got to get someone in from the, one of the networks to give us that full, full real, real deal. Oh, behind here. the curtain. Behind, look. Like, Hey, Absolutely, oh, we'll find we'll find it. We'll find it. But the thing too, like even before, I know we got we got the networks and stuff that that you know we talked about the NBC, the Peacocks, the CBS and stuff. Don't forget, there's also the Big Ten Network. You know, <laughs> lost in a shuffle somewhere here now. You know, they were one of the originators having these networks for conferences. So, 
They that, just got bigger. In there. Big Ten yeah. Network got bigger. Now they're yeah. in multiple. Like, think about how many rooftops and eyeballs. That's what they talk in the media executive world. Rooftops and eyeballs. That's where those households with TVs. There's a whole lot of them, guys. See the shining sea? That, that's the Big Ten now. You know, Pacific mm. Ocean. Now, Ocean. Here's, now, here's also, and this is this is my last thought on this, but the, the, schools, ahead, that, the schools that are at the bottom of this, right, will they start to look at like they are never, not never, but competing with the top, are they going to find different ways to go to another conference? Like, yes, we joined forces, got more. But as some way, somehow, someone's going to leave. You know what I mean? I think that down the road, someone's going to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to exit out of this. But, like, that money, I don't think they're going to run from it. But right. That's what I was about to say. Right. They're money. not going to run from the money, Man, but right. you yeah, also pick that ass about. whooping for that money. I <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they're going to be locked in, you know, similar to the ACC. They're locked into that contract. If they leave, they're going to have to give a percent. They're going to have to pay a buyout clause. Absolutely. One, yeah. And then they're going to have to pay a percentage of their TV rights to, you know, back to that, to the original conference that they were in. So I think there's a lot of incentive that's not going to make them leave, uh, but who knows? Yeah. Incredible. Who said that? Gary Fuller, I nominate Rutgers. I mean, we also everybody wants to know. Right. We also saw that recent news of like Big Ten championship football game. Oh, man. Relocated to. Yeah, I saw that. So like. They can not relocate it, but start to rotate, like going closer to the mid, like that midline of, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be in Omaha. There it is. <laughs> I was just like, no, no. Yeah, I know. I saw Allegiant. The, yeah. Allegiant, which is, I mean, that's that's baller, man. Like from a standpoint, that's Big that's legit. In Vegas, Woo. Vegas. Lord Gosh. knows. Oh man, Vegas. Uh, look, look, Sean asked the question. Yes, this is Sparta will definitely be at the Big Ten Championship game in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Only, only if we're in it. Only if- <laughs> right. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> we were Absolutely. close. So hey, we need man. credentials, right? I mean, listen, <laughs> we, we'll have one big This is Sparta MSU party there. How about that? Everybody join up and meet in Vegas for the Big Ten Championship. And cheer the Spartans on to victory. That, that's on, on Stray's pockets. On, on that's Stray's right. We'll do, it. we'll do it. We'll figure it out. You know. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so, guys, look, Javon Ringer, Tico Duckett, and Todd, Girl, baby. Todd. Todd well, Duckett. Practice. Right. Check this little picture out right here from Michigan State football. Uh, it looks like this is what eleven thousand nine hundred eighty-nine rushing yards in one picture looks like. <laughs> Boy, look, Choo Choo, we should have scheduled it. I mean, look, like, how much would that be? Look, like, y'all, it's good Lord. I was like, Jesus. It's crazy, man. Yeah, that's uh, you know, that's a great picture there. And it's it's just, you know, great, you know, in the eras, you know, of Spartan football there. And it's truly, truly running back you, you know, to a point. Because Michigan State has really churned out a ton of ton of good running backs. And uh, you know, that's a really, really cool picture. Uh, that those three uh, gentlemen were in there, and uh, as Otis would say, kudos to uh, <laughs> Michigan State Twitter for you know, you know, having the whereabouts to think about that, take that snapshot, and uh, post that. I think that's really cool. Um, you know, shout out to those guys. Uh, you know, out there at practice, and uh, you know, there's something. You know, I don't think the running backs in today's world get a lot of you know credit as they need. But uh, that right there, that's that's something that's really special. And we got some cooking in behind the scenes with the Ducker brothers, so stay tuned there. Ooh, so man. it's going to be good, man. You're never going to forget about the running backs, especially the ones who played here or continue to play here. Single game tickets go on sale, guys. Still on sale right now. Here's the graphic. Show us. There Get we them. go. Get them now. Get them now. Yeah, get your damn tickets. Don't be coming to me. <laughs> Yeah, because if you go to him, then he gonna come to me. And <laughs> and I'm gonna be, lose you in. Yeah, I'll be like, nah, bro, nah. Oh, it's, the, it's the year of the no. <laughs> the no. <laughs> He's kidding everybody. You just <laughs> stay tuned. He'll you'll get something. Single but game. But no, ticket. go and get your single game tickets. If there's a if there's a game that you if you're not a season ticket holder, and uh, you know oh, there's man. that sweet game that you want to go to. Get you. You don't have the Peacock Network, and you want to go see Washington come to town live. Come see it live. 
good weather, good food, good people. Uh, you know, go to you know what's the, what's the new Tucktown Otis? What's it going to be fest. called? It's fan Fest. Fan, fan yeah, Fest. Yeah, it's presented by Meyer Fan Fest. So there we go. Yeah, that's where that's where everybody there. that's the place to be right Rain, there. Rain, look, food trucks. We got it lined up. DJ is going to be it's going to be way better than year one. Year one was great, but we always got to add some levels to it. Go to the next step. So it's going to be good mm. to everybody come there. Come check your check two out. Come check Stray out. Come check all the vendors and the activations going. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. And we're still we're gonna get be able to get your merchandise outside too. We got a retail store we popped up now. Ooh, so, yeah! Don't have to get stand you, in that you line. Yeah, you can yeah. wear it in to the stadium. Absolutely. Hey, look, hey, take this off. Like you can keep it. <laughs> right, right. There's that. There's that one game yeah. you come to with a, a t-shirt on, and all of a sudden those clouds come above. Oh, I need a hoodie. Boom! <laughs> right there, down in Dustin. That's a great sales. That's a great sales pitch right there. <laughs> oh, I need a hoodie. <laughs> so, like, if if Look, you know the biggest pet nah, my biggest pet peeve is people wearing like those polos that bro, it's time to LIG it, Craig. Let it go. <laughs> like the, you got the bacon collar, you got like old right. different, you got the old boy. Yeah, you got the old green, like real old old green. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, Boys. <laughs> like the John L, the John L, yeah, like the Reeboks. Yeah. The Reeboks, the, the, the Sabins <laughs> that we was wearing. Yeah, was go ahead and get you some new gear. We got some good lines going out. And hey, you know what? We probably have. We gotta get Erica Austin on so she can show you exactly what we got in the line to go get your merchandise. As much as you buy, it comes right back to the athletic department. So go ahead and, and do what you gotta do. This is Sparta swag coming soon. We told you, Tom. Just just be patient. You know, we're talking days. Hey, I want some absolute pure uh swag too. Yes. Man. Come on now. <laughs> Let's get some of that. Water <laughs> soldier. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. It, it, MSU adds a Strength coach in Shaquille Lee, who joined the strength and conditioning staff today, coming out of Syracuse. That that's a that's a big boy right there coming in there, uh, coming from Syracuse. Uh, you know, I think it's a good get uh, at Syracuse. Their coach uh, Dino Babers. Uh, you know, he he's put together, he orchestrated a really good uh, staff. Uh, turn that Syracuse program around. They're tougher, they're more physical, and that's compliments to what they do in the weight room. So I think he's going to be a value add, you know, to the Spartans. That was awesome. And Otis, I know you got a whole lot to talk about with that, but listen, we're going <laughs> to. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he ain't little, Steve. Uh, yeah, he ain't little. Hey, look. Not for you. look, we got to talk about, you know, fan bases and college football's most mm -hmm. underrated teams in a minute, man. And we got to hit the like and subscribe and then listen to this message from our friends over at IHOP. $5 all-you-can-eat pancakes are back to celebrate IHOP's 65th anniversary. So come on in, even if it's your birthday too. Available for a limited time only at IHOP. Download the app and start earning free food. All right, fellas, drop those pancakes, everybody. Let's see them. Love them pancakes and love IHOP. Never forget about IHOP. Thanks, Kyle. All right, Michigan State, fellas, listed as the number eight most underrated college football team of 2023, according to the College Football Blue Bloods. Oh, man, they got – what you think about that? See Colorado? Of course you see Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Is that is that like the most underrated going into the season that yeah. like the expectations, you know, I think Michigan State should be higher on that, you know, because eight just for the record, Michigan State is the most bet on team for that over under in in the country, you know, what that the Vegas that, has that, that could be a gift and a curse. <laughs> that five of action. 5.5 wins? Oh, I'm taking that over all day. Eating yeah, that look, one. I hope you wasn't doing that when you was playing. You've been like these other players right now. But <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't oh, what? I, I I'm just relaying the news. I know you. I'm just saying. I hope you... <laughs> oh, He's geez. not a player no more. You can do it. <laughs> no, I'm I saying. Don't, I don't it four and a half? I don't even, four and a half? Bet now. I don't even bet now. I sports. think it's four and a half. That's the over under. Well, you also got to take into consideration no, what's the strength what's the strength of schedule for those those top ten. You know, we we're we got the number three, but I'm saying what about the other guys, the teams that are rated above us? What's that strength of schedule? Because clearly, 
Colorado is in the Pac-12, but I mean, I'm going to put that schedule back up, that that uh that graphic back up there when we get a chance there, because those teams there, you know, Colorado being number one, that underrated factor that I don't know if they're on. I don't like. They I'm have not a player. Fan. Like you don't. You, wait, you're not a believer. No, I I just this is what I think. I I think I love Deion Sanders. I think he's a hell of a player. In order for him to be successful, he has to surround himself with a good coaching staff that can take care of the X's and Because Deion has, is, right? He, he has, right? I mean, we'll see. He is a he's a gimmick guy. You know, he's that guy that's going to, you know, talk, get you fired up, ready to go. But on game day, I don't think he does much. <laughs> you know, he's not calling plays. You know, he's so I, I don't know with that. So he got to surround himself. I don't I, the expectations aren't very high for me um, with Colorado, um, but the expectations are super high for Michigan State. Hmm. So look. MSU doesn't do back-to-back losing season. I think going back 15 plus years from now, this is yeah, damn near a layup bet for the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're we right. Always I, bounce back. Yeah, because look, I mean, guys, we've been breaking this down. You know, we've we've we've, we've cried all our tears from 2022, and when you strip away the emotion, you see that though that wasn't a, that that wasn't the, the the a real representation of that team, a healthy version of that team. It just wasn't like you know. There's no excuses here. They're not, none are coming out of the coaches' mouths or the players. But guys, I mean, that's like winning, playing games without your quarterback when you lose the players they lost at an early time uh, last year. But I don't know what is the over under win total for Colorado this year, Chu. Oh, that's a that's a good one. I I, I put them. I put three and them a half. Up. What's what that? Vegas, Vegas has them at three and a half. So, oh, they're gonna go over that. I say they're gonna they're gonna be a bowl team. They're gonna because through you know they're gonna be willed to win some games like that. Uh, they have they have good players. You know, Shador Sanders, he's a heck of a player. I, I have him at six and six. So then there you go. So then Michigan State is you're right five and a half in mm-hmm. Vegas. Where do you have Michigan State? Mm. I have um, going into so. Going into the season before Spartan Dog Con and everything, I had Michigan say realistically at about eight and four. Mm. After Spartan Dog Con, I say eight and four is a disappointment. <laughs> and, I heard and that, talk, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and you know, after Spartan Dog Con, after talking to players, um, mm. you know, on the team before camp, I actually just got a text from a player, you know, talking about camp, and it's eight and four <laughs> would be a disappointment. Eight and four is a disappointment. Yes, because that's the expectation that I have. Oh, the Kool Aid, the Kool Aid game, strong. It is strong. <laughs> Kool Aid. Oh, it is flowing. All right. Yeah, that boy. I was like, man. Hey, uh, I can listen. Listen, I, listen I I'm all right. about post game, post game. Like, just get. Let's just take care of business, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. I've been to practice now, and I've been. I've Talk been, to us about what you're seeing over there. Oh, just just a little. I've been really reserved. Because we're because gonna go like, deep next week. But let's yeah, talk a little bit. I've been really reserved, but I know that everybody that I see out there, they are working. And it's like it is all team, 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 and going above beyond is like the effort. Like you see a difference. Like you see it in every level, every position, the coaches staff, just the organization. You know, I, I was with Kyle and uh his son and his and his cousin, and you know, you're sitting there, you just like Man, like the vibe, if it kind of brought you back to when you were playing, but still you see just productivity and just just they know it's time to go. And I feel I feel that like I feel like the juice and I'm like trying not to drink a lot of the Kool-Aid and get like a sugar rush. I'm stirring that. Kool-Aid. Like, I know you st- <laughs> I know you start. He's that spiking Kool-Aid. it, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you say? Like, like it's like it's almost like it's, it's almost like did you do the sugar first, water? How did you make the Kool Aid? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, I'm injecting that Kool Aid. <laughs> uh, it's and, and I and I've, I I try to look at it like actually I just saw offense society because like by the time I make my way to the defensive field, like period has changed and then you know, they're transitioning. But um, I I'm all about. I was looking at the special teams like how the circuits was going. And I was just like, yo, 
this is like this is on a different level from a standpoint of how the organization and how they're going and doing those drills and everybody's in those like you know how people that may not play special teams they're not in it everybody's in it mm. everybody's in it you know what i'm saying mm. so like and I know he's like I know. Right? It was my like, time to chill. <laughs> like Gator ain't cool. I know. I know you're you here, you here talking like, hey man, how you doing? <laughs> no nah, man, everybody's in it, and um, and if because you know scrimmage is happening this weekend, and so uh, you know I'm gonna go out tomorrow morning and see. But you know I've been real reserved just to just taking it. In. I've talked to people, but I've just been sitting there just observing because Come it's silent. Oh on. yeah. Oh he's. Oh no. I'm. I always drink a Kool Aid. I, I drink I it too much. That's what I'm saying. I know. I drink it too much where like it messes my day up. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but I, I honestly, it's going. It's we're we're working in silence, grinding silence, and we're gonna shine on on Friday and Saturday. That that's how I feel. It, it looks good because you know how you practice too. You know how we all practice and prepare, and you're always looking at the stadium, right? And preparing for that first game. Yep. And so. I got that whole like I got goosebumps just thinking about it because like, hey, we're preparing for like we're winning games now, and it's just it's just practice in the game. Like that's how the level of competition is right now. Mm-hmm. And your boy Noah Kim, man, like I got goosebumps. Like you know how you called up there, you know they stretched. Like that man ran up there and had that hey, he had that natural deep voice like Spark Jack T ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he oh, said, yeah? Yo, yeah, man. Swag we got some leadership. Wagu, yeah. baby. It's mm-hmm. on there like God, Wagu. Hey. So look, we you know, we were at that uh the Jersey Reveal event. There was a ton of players in there, right? I, obviously at the Spartan Dog Con, you know, current players, us former guys, and then obviously the, the guys that they're, they're recruiting. This is by far like this isn't lip service. You know, I know you're hearing it if you're paying attention to any Mel Tucker press conferences, Scotty Hazelton. Look. This team is as physically impressive by the look, the eye, the, the dimensions of this team is the most physically impressive team I've ever seen at Michigan State across the board. You know, there, there's always we, we've always had crazy dudes, right? We've always had that. But across the board, like at every position, it's like, ooh, we're looking like one of those teams, like a, a little young little, we you know, like I say, yeah, yes, yeah. that SEC yeah. look. Hey, That's you, know, that. you gotta have that, guys. You, 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 you do, you and, know, and Mel knows that. Coach Tuck, uh, he knows you, that. Yeah, you know who's out here. <laughs> this boy is monstrous, and is this is this is go time. That boy Malik Carr. Oh that yeah. Boy, oh, hey, yeah. that boy is oh, yeah. That boy, that boy, that boy, is, that boy is humming on some blocking now, boy. Like I'm talking. Oh, he getting them hands coming. inside and finishing. Fully oh, committed, man. Dog. Like, like look, I don't, That's bro. all they want to see. That boy, yeah, that boy didn't take it. He he didn't it didn't click. Like it's mm-hmm. it's go time. This that year, and he are that's that year. He going to the league like freak a leak. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, freak a leak. Oh my goodness! So let me look, guys. Who's the top ten hated fan base? Let's talk about that. Yeah, put it in a, put it in a check. Oh man, I was like, put it in a check before we listen up here. Yeah, who who are your most hated fan bases? Everyone in the chat, let's see what you say because we're we're missing them. I don't see them in that top ten. Put that up one more time. Yeah, yeah Ohio State. Yeah, no, 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 Michigan, nowhere. Ann Arbor, Michigan's no. number three. Oh, there they go. Yeah, that Maine. Oh, the boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm tripping. I'm oh, looking you need them, hey, you need them. You need them, Georgies. <laughs> I'm looking for them blue boys, man. Hey, them jo- <laughs> blah. Ha. Listen, George he's gonna be at the scrimmage. Get he's gonna be at the scrimmage. Okay, and he's gonna get it. You know, hey, you hey, you know on that list, there, on. Ohio State's number one. I don't really have that hatred for Ohio State. Like you know, like, that's because Michigan writers no, they're they're everywhere. Mich- Michigan's up. I I hate Notre Dame more than Ohio. Oh, Otis. Who do you- I I agree with you on that. I okay, agree with you. that's what I I'm agree saying. With you. Like when you say that argument, absolutely. But I yeah. do dislike them. You know what I'm saying? But like. No, nah, hatred is Michigan and it's the, the Notre Dame Irish. Like, mm-hmm. I I still remember Coach Mack. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I still remember. And that's the best pre-coach, like, pre-speech I've ever in my entire life listened to when he said he, – he cursed Jesus, touched down Jesus, said, I don't know – he said, I'm going to get struck down for saying this, but F touchdown Jesus. And then we won that overtime. So I was like, hey, all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I had I had my I know everybody was like, oh Lord, no, Jesus, please don't. <laughs> Forgive me, Father. I am not with him. <laughs> it was true. It was true. He we said, what there. now? He said, <laughs> yes. He said, touchdown touch Jesus. Jesus. And we were like, oh, man, we about to get stumped. <laughs> and you know what he's going to be saying in a few weeks here? <laughs> I know. Look, we're going to talk to him. We're going to talk to him on the side. Like, he, let's hope he fraternizes with us, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. So what do you guys think about the uh, – you know, who's all the loser rings? We got U of M, then listen, Notre Dame. Them Georgia fans. Them Georgia fans. Alabama fans, like when I was at the CFP in that national championship game in Indianapolis – them Bama fans were like, I was in the Bama section and they was, I mean, they was getting it, you know, like, oh, we good. Like all that hype and Georgia's all hype. Well, it'll settle down and we'll, we'll, we'll beat them in the dust. But I remember it wasn't even, it was the female fans that was outrageously like, I mean, it was nasty. And I legit was like, this is crazy. Like, is this like this all the time? And it was like, yeah, it's like this. Cause as soon as Georgia won, I mean, I ain't never seen so many people just li- like they. I mean, gone like it was ghost. People be and, and you know what? You gotta you gotta love that a little bit too, like that passion that they have. As long as they don't project that hate onto the players or yeah. anything like that, but you know, I, I, you know that it means something that it hurts. You know, to lose because you invest so much into the team. You know, that is something you gotta respect a little bit as well. You want to see kids crying like it's over. <laughs> I yeah, I want to yeah. see a kid cry too. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I want my mom and them hugging them and that 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 one shiny moment, you know, on there when they're doing the rollbacks and the kids crying with like you know, like the band girl, you know, crying while playing her little piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> So, so be honest, Chu. Is that the part that you like the most about the trouble with the snap play uh, against Michigan? It was twenty fifteen. Yes, yes. The, 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 the crying, sheer, the, the sheer crying, suffer, the Kroper, yes. the Kroper guy. That, oh, yes, the sheer about. suffering and uh, and the and the, that silence <laughs> so deafening. Silence, and, silence. Yeah, that that yes. is, I loved it. I loved it. Anytime I can see a Wolverine or a fighting Irish just in agony and hurt. Based off what their team did, it makes me feel so much better. I mean, true. I mean, he's saying what you all feel. He's saying it out loud. That's it's all. True. It's That's true. it. You know. Yeah, because I, I, it really, it really irks me. People are like, why are you so passionate about that, man? It's all we all we love we love everybody. No, nah, man. Mm-mm. Like, no, nah, bro. Like. I don't, I don't, I don't deal with those jokes like them jokes that come out like. You know, oh I don't, no, I don't, I don't handle those well. Like I gotta leave because it's like, like right. the Lord. I thank God I'm saved, but like I will, I will, man. It's, it is it's, documented. It's, Otis, don't it's, be playing that. So listen, please. And, and when I see license, like, when I see license plates and stuff on cars, like I mean, it's like a pit bull. Like I'm just, I'm mad, bro. Like I just, I'm pissed. <laughs> just naturally in me. I don't it's just. I wish I had it sometimes, but I'm glad I do. But, but yeah. <laughs> hey, Coach D had it. I remember him on a warm up. I was, I think, I was doing sideline at the time. There it is, the Cobra Man. Yeah, there, I love girl. That. that. Yep, that's I love it. it. Love it. Just want them in. Just no, hard, just hard. I, wanna, I wish we had that hardball when he was <laughs> that hardball in sideline. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have taken me. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, no, Coach D, it was uh, – Michigan was at home. It was that game that they ended up coming back and beating us, right? It, and it was before. It was the, the game, the pregame warm-up before he ends up saying, you know, pride comes before the fall the next day, right? That – I remember, I'll never forget him being on the sideline and we were talking. There was a couple other former players there huddled up with him. And one of the receivers, I think for their star receiver, can't think of his name. He played in the league a little bit. but Mario he, Manningham. Manningham, that was him. You were in this game, probably. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> Coach D, bark, like, like he, he like kind of brushed up against him. And Coach D, it was almost, it was like Otis. I remember this when you were in Indiana and that fan was heckling you and I had to hold you back. <laughs> and it was for real. <laughs> it, was, it was for real. <laughs> I said, <laughs> hey, <laughs> this, I, was like, I said, Coach, you know what I'm saying? Like, you really, I got to really stop you, man. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just in me. 
I oh, guess. Oh man, I was oh that day that kid was about to die that day. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, then I, I know. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I don't like. Joke. I don't like Hoosier fans either, man. Like after that one, <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, man. It was basketball. You know that's the. I mean, yeah, we playing that. Mm. So, uh, you got some passionate dudes over here, guys. Just so you know, it's real. So we understand the pain. That, that one. Yep. There, you go. there, there, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. There Ooh. it is. That one. Ooh. Like, damn, I got to face the media after this. Oh, Ooh. how do you? How do you? <laughs> Mm. We're our, it's going to forge our spine. You know, that's what he said. That's all he could say. Yeah. Uh, because he felt that it was, was broken at that time. Let's, th- those are tough. Uh, you know, we've been in those tough situations. I, I chew the game that you should have carried the ball and you know, we shouldn't be talking about this. It should be another great win over Notre Dame in 2006. Was it 20? Yeah. 2006. Yeah, 2006. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, <clears throat> it's tough. And, you know, that was as quiet as I've ever seen it in Michigan State after a loss. But, look, guys, look, it's it's all about, you know, like the the passion that this game provides. This was why football, in my opinion, is the, is the number one watch thing on television. That's why you get billions of dollars flowing around all over the place and players are just now beginning to get paid, which is long overdue. But $100 million uh, contracts for coaches. It's because people we just love it. This is reality TV at its finest, fellas. <clears throat> yep, that's true. And uh, you know, just like that uh comment in the every Big Ten team won their bowl game, except and I was rooting that Michigan would not ne- would be the one that didn't win their game because I don't want them to have any success. <laughs> oh, don't you hate that when the when the, the Wolverine fans say, Don't you know, we we cheer for you guys when you're we're not playing. Dope. Don't uh, cheer for us. Don't we don't want we don't want you. We don't cheer for you. Take your ass back to Ann Arbor. <laughs> also, there's a player or two here and there that you don't wish harm on, but everybody else to hell with them. Anyway, got <laughs> <guys>, so <laughs> you have a four game expansion against high schools. They play. Yeah, yeah, Steve. That that's a, a real thing. Talking about Harbaugh. We never thought about- we never brought it up to when we were listening to that. That podcast with with Braylon Edwards. Oh boy, we never yeah. brought it up, but it was just like, what are we talking about, man? No, like, no, it was, it was, I'm gonna cuss on this. I, yeah, what, is, what are you talking about? Tell us. Talk, be, keep it real with us. I know we got to get out of here soon. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was. It was obviously talking about this this uh, this suspension, and it is all about. No, it's it's all about a burger. Come on. I was like, no, it's not about the burger. It's about the integrity of you should have just been honest, right? Like, I think it was that point. But then Brandon was talking about some crazy stuff like, you know, you know, about the recruits and then like, you know, the NCAA, dead zone, NCAA, the NCAA dead zone. Out to like, get Michigan and all this just, BS that, yo, know, if they're out to get Michigan, they would have showed that that uh, other Smith, angle from yeah. that. Oh, yeah. So don't don't come at there. And he dropped the R word, which I did not appreciate. Ooh, he did. Yep, he did. And, so. and, people, and people let him slide for that. If that was one of us on here that did that, that would be going somewhere else. They would want us crucified, tarred and feathered in the town square. But he can do that stuff. And, you know, they're just going to sweep that under the rug because that's what they do over there at Ann Arbor. I told you guys, don't get me started on this team. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. And he know what you real. He like the preacher. He like, he put that pencil like, I told you now. And you're back home, man. And talk about that. <laughs> I, I pay the food. Truly believe, <laughs> right? Yes, I feel. Look, hey, I feel you on that, Braylon. Hey, we got. We should bring Braylon on. What you we, think? we <laughs> <laughs> look. Then she was like, "I'm gonna go toe to toe." We to like forty-five him delay. verbally. Do we need forty-five? How many? How much time do we need to delay that particular interview? <laughs> so we can get him on. Yeah, we need to delay that particular interview. Hit the dump. It'll be that just as far as MSU pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. Uh, he, he trying to get that the waiver sign. Zuckerberg fight going. <laughs> <laughs> <He's trying> to... <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> oh my goodness, guys! That 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 would be awesome. Guys. Look, Braylon talks big when he thinks he can get you. Dude takes no accountability, but you don't see him walk through. Tough. Oh, he doesn't talk tough when it's someone his size or bigger. Is all I'm going to say. This is true. But yeah, yeah, he likes to knock out little guys uh, at, at bars around town in Metro Detroit. I know that. Like the you know high school kids, five foot eight, mm-hmm. 120 pounds. He'll do that. 
He's known to do that. But um, it's a good point. You know, we're going to get on the Braylon. We got to wait till October to get all our blood boiling like this. It's, this is <laughs> this is August, right? Preseason. We got, like, Otis, we need to know. Otis and Ju, you are going to be there this uh, weekend for the for the scrimmage? I might. I, I plan it because I have that bocce ball tournament. And it's a major weekend, tournament so. happening yeah, in major. Lansing. And this mother, too, is talking <laughs> trash. Like, uh, Will T even called me like. He called well, me like four times. Yeah, well, Chu is talking uh, trash. And, you know, he's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was like, I was like, let me guess. Chu says he's an all-American bocce, like all-American <laughs> guy, right? Like, don't, don't, don't tell <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we need bocce some video bocce from that because no one knows what the, I mean. This bocce tournament is it's legendary. Man, Get some good vic- pictures too. and video from that if you could, so we can share it with everyone. Chew, please. Are you going, Otis? I will be. Otis is Otis is on a team. Otis oh, on team. he's in it. Uh, okay, yeah. Tony G, are you going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Why did you do that? Rev's going. Rev, Jeff Howard, our guy, he'll be there. Hey, defending Rev champion. Tony G didn't get the- <laughs> I don't I don't understand this. Tony G said hard. Can you make pass. a call, Otis? Oh, please help it's Tony G out. This is crazy. From the production meeting. We're getting on Tony G. Y'all be- <laughs> All y'all say, "Oh, look at y'all now!" Hey, we're gonna, oh, hey, we're gonna it. have some real life play by play. We're gonna record it. We're gonna go live on on social. And two, <laughs> it's gonna it's, be it's, good. Don't forget, it's Barbie themed, Otis. Man, I got, bro. I, I, oh my goodness, <laughs> the Barbie theme, man. Cool. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's a themed boxing. Like you show up dressed. It's like a dress type thing. Like I already know what you about to come with. What song? What he about to wear? <laughs> I was like, it was only one black person in that Barbie movie. I yeah, I showed you. <laughs> you told me like, you know what? I'm about to be GI Joe. And he would have been there. <laughs> when is the botch tournament? It's Saturday. Saturday. So after right. the scrimmage, so we got the scrimmage in the morning. You know, I know, uh, you know, legendary broadcaster George Blaha will be in attendance along with. I mean, the whole broadcast team's going to be there except yours. Listen, my son's playing a game in, in uh, Chicago. So I, I can't make that. Is that the but, first game of the season, or is it a? This is this is the you know my my eighth grade. Yes, oh, okay. he, his first game. The next one is in Nashville for for Caden. Mm-hmm. He's got good news too. I mean, man, he just got word where he'll be he'll be playing. What what position? And you know, mm-hmm. so it's different than we've been used to. You guys know. We'll wait till the first game comes before we start talking about all that publicly you know but guys like I, I think this was an outstanding show we do not need anybody's battery to die during the taping of this show we are live and you know listen guys like final thoughts before we wrap it up and get back to business because we got football talk we got guests coming next week what's up oh uh, it's thursday man it's one of those like one more day towards kickoff and we're going a thousand miles per hour to get this thing set up for success when you know Central Michigan comes to town. Um, but we got some things lined up to keep everybody involved <clears throat> and up to date. But uh, was, this is a good show today, so we're looking forward to uh, to next Tuesday. Yeah, Shoot. same here. I'm I'm excited about it. this. Was a very good show. I I enjoyed myself coming on. Wait, every time I get, you know, sometimes I'll be tired coming on, but I get a boost of energy <laughs> interacting with you. you know, with, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> oh, you be trying like, well, I gotta eat dinner before we get on this thing, man. Like, oh. Yeah, well, yeah. See, so I I love interacting yeah. with the you know with the this is Sparta MSU fam here. I'm excited, you know, when we when we talk about the merch that's coming out. Um, mm, you know, all mm. yeah, it's it's gonna be something really cool. You know, we saw, we saw a little sneak peek of it. You know, some things, and uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. And it's very it's inclusive. So even all the females and stuff, there's stuff for you. The everybody, it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> As you see, Otis is our main model for it. <laughs> He's down there dancing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was on the way. You know, it was great interacting with everybody today, you know, getting a chance to see, you know, what this season's outlook is going to be, man. And we're crystallizing everything coming. You know, we're going to get a better picture, you know, because I know sources and current players are texting Choo Choo as we speak about what's going on. But we will see how they play in dress rehearsal in the scrimmage on Saturday. And then we'll report back to you on Tuesday exactly what we're seeing and get some bocce ball footage to see if Choo wins that thing. My money's on the under on that one. But listen, 
you know, for Horace <laughs> Wiley, Jay, you culprit. I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Have a good night. God bless you guys. And go green. Go, go white. white. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host, Jason Strayhorn, JU Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, go green.